Well, again, I welcome you for those who are joining us now with our venue community. We're glad that you're with us, those in the cafe and those online. We're glad that you're all here today. I believe that today is going to be very encouraging for all of us. We've already engaged in singing to give worship and praise to Jesus Christ. We're now going to enter into a time of opening up the scriptures to see who God is and what it is that he has for our life. And we're going to finish our time today celebrating with believers who have placed their faith in Jesus Christ, taking the step of faith to obey the command of Jesus to be baptized by water immersion. Believers' baptism by immersion in water, it's been celebrated for over 2,000 years. To be immersed means to be completely submerged in water that the entire person would go under the water and can come back up again. And millions of believers all around the world during your very own lifetime have been baptized by water immersion as an obedient response to the command of Jesus Christ, who is the Son of God. And if millions of believers have been baptized by water immersion in your very own lifetime, just imagine for a moment how many believers have been baptized by water immersion through the last 2,000 years. That's a lot of believers going public with their faith in Jesus Christ alone for their salvation because of the grace of God that's been made available to them because of the cross of Jesus Christ. That's a lot of believers going all the way down under the water and coming back up out of the water, fully soaked and giving big wet hugs, full of joy to all the people who are around them because they're grateful for the work of God in their life as they're taking steps to obey him. Now, to really understand how believers' baptism through water immersion has really multiplied to an immeasurable number of waves in the water, if you will, over the last 2,000 years, we need to go back to the beginning when it first came onto the scene in the narrative of the Christian faith. We need to look at the baptism origin story because it's in the baptism origin story that there are some moments in history or waves we'll call them today that were larger than others these waves in the water had an impact for all of eternity they have impacted many of us and today there's a room full of people already that it's going to impact again brothers and sisters in Christ and it just might be that the waves of the waters of baptism are going to impact you today. We'll see what God does in your life as we continue on this morning. And this is what we're going to study. It's the five waves of the baptism origin story. Five waves in the baptism origin story. Now, to begin this, we need to look at where we see in Scripture, we see baptism. And we've been studying the Gospel of John together as a church family. We're going to continue to do that today, but we got to rewind and go back to chapter 1. So I would encourage you to turn your Bible to two places. The first is in John chapter 1, verses 19 through 34. The second is in Matthew 28, verses 16 through 20. The first is where we see baptism explained uh, initially in Scripture. The second is where we see the command of Jesus Christ in the Great Commission. If you don't own a copy of the Bible for yourself, do not worry. We would love to give you a free copy of the Bible today. Your church family here would like to provide to you at no cost your own very copy of the Word of God. Just come to the altar room or in the venue. Go to the altar room right after the gathering and we'll put a copy of the Word of God in your hands. And we would love to do that. So please take advantage of that. There are note sheets in your program as well, but what's going to be probably most helpful is just to keep your eyes on the screens, because on the screens will be all the verses that I'm going to walk through today. I'm going to walk through a number of verses, and also the outline of how we're going to logically work through our content today. So keep your eyes on the screens, and then we'll be able to follow along well together. Well, in John chapter 1, verse 19, we see the first major wave in the baptism origin story. Wave number one, it's the foreshadowing of John the Baptist, the foreshadowing of John the Baptist. In John 1, 19, it says this, this is the testimony of John when the Jews sent to him priests and Levites from Jerusalem to ask him, who are you? Now the gospel of Luke helps us understand why the Jews sent to John the Baptist, these religious leaders to ask John, who are you? In in Luke 3, 15, it says, now while the people were in a state of expectation And they were wondering in their hearts about John as to whether he was the Christ. Is he the Messiah? Is he the Savior? So that's the context of this passage. Many people are wondering if John the Baptist was the long-awaited Messiah. So they approach him and they ask him this question. Again, verse 19. This is the testimony of John 
when the Jews sent to him priests and Levites from Jerusalem to ask him, who are you? And he confessed and did not deny, but confessed, I am not the Christ. And they asked him, what then? Are you Elijah? And he said, I am not. Are you the prophet? And he answered, no. And they said to him, who are you? So that we may give an answer to those who sent us. What do you say about yourself? He said, I am a voice of one crying in the wilderness, make straight the way of the Lord, as Isaiah the prophet said. John the Baptist clearly declares that he was sent by God to prepare the way for the Messiah of God, the Savior of God, that God would send into the world to provide salvation. Now the Gospel of Matthew, it helps us understand what this message was that John the Baptist was sharing, preparing the way for the Savior. And Matthew 3, 1 and 2, it says this. Now in those days, John the Baptist came preaching in the wilderness of Judea saying, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And then in the gospel of Mark, it fills in more details in Mark 1, 4 and 5. John the Baptist appeared in the wilderness preaching a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And all of the country of Judea was going out to him and all the people of Jerusalem and they were being baptized him in the Jordan River confessing their sins. Here we see how John the Baptist was baptizing with water. The whole point of the baptisms that John the Baptist was encouraging people to do, it was all about repentance from sin, which is why we see in the passage here that it says that everybody was going out to John the Baptist and they were confessing their sins. John the Baptist was preparing the way for the Savior of God by encouraging people to confess their sins and then make a public display of their confession with water baptism. Now, again, in our text in John chapter 1 and verse 24 through 27, it says this, now they, the religious leaders, had been sent from the Pharisees and they asked him, John the Baptist, and they said to him, why then are you baptizing? If you are not the Christ, nor Elijah, nor the prophet. And John answered them saying, I baptize in water, but among you stands one whom you do not know. It is he who comes after me, the thong of whose sandal I am not worthy to untie. John the Baptist understood that the water baptism that he was encouraging people to do was just a foreshadowing It was a means of preparation for the more complete baptism that would come through the Savior of the world. Our passage continues in verse 28. It says, These things took place in Bethany beyond the Jordan where John was baptizing. The next day he saw Jesus coming to him and said, Behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. This is he. On behalf of whom I said, after me comes a man who has a higher rank than I, for he existed before me. This is a major moment in history. This is a major wave in the baptism origin story. John the Baptist, who was sent by God to prepare the way for the Savior of the world, was now looking directly at Jesus Christ. And he declares, behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. The first major wave in the baptism story was the foreshadowing of John the Baptist. Now the second major wave we see in this text in verse 31, it's wave number two. It's the revealing of the Son of God. The revealing of the Son of God. In verse 31, it says this. John is speaking. He says, I did not recognize him, but so that he might be manifested to Israel, I came baptizing In water. Water baptism is the means in which God chose to have John the Baptist use so that the Savior of the world would be revealed. The Gospel of Matthew helps us see this scene unfold. In Matthew chapter 3, verses 13 through 17, it says this Then Jesus arrived from Galilee at the Jordan, coming to John the Baptist to be baptized by him. But John tried to prevent Jesus, saying, I have need to be baptized by you. And do you come to me? you got to remember that in this moment, John the Baptist only understood baptism at this point to, to mean a symbol of repentance and confession. And he sees the Savior of the world coming at him, and he says, he doesn't need to confess. He doesn't need to repent. I need to confess and repent. I'm the one who needs to be baptized. 
And Jesus responds to him in verse 15. He says, permit it at this time, for in this way it is fitting for us to fulfill all righteousness Then he, John the Baptist, permitted Jesus to be baptized. And after being baptized, Jesus came up immediately from the water. And behold, the heavens were open and he saw the Spirit of God descending as a dove and lighting on him. And behold, a voice out of the heavens said, This is my beloved Son in whom I am well pleased. In this moment, we see all three persons of God in the same scene. God the Son, Jesus, is being baptized. God the Holy Spirit descends onto Jesus in bodily form. And God the Father, with an audible voice of heaven, says, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. Do you want to hear God speak audibly? You just did. He looks at Jesus and says, This is my beloved Son, and in Him I am well pleased. Now, I want to address the pleasure of God the Father in this moment because in a very slight way, I have enjoyed this type of pleasure as well as I have seen those that I love be baptized. I remember all the way back years ago being down at the river and seeing my wife be baptized by Pastor Rick. And I know that picture is small, but that was a long time ago. And Rick looks a lot different in that picture anyway, so it's okay. But I remember being on the bank you know, with her celebrating afterwards. And man, she looks exactly the same still. And I will, I don't, man. She is like, she is beautiful and I am not. I look like my oldest son right there. What happened to me? I don't know. But speaking of him, I remember baptizing him in the venue. We pulled a hot tub into it. It was right after he got back from a Mexico missions trip, man. And I remember him looking up at me and me looking up at him, down at him. And I just remember feeling a lot of pleasure as dad that my son was being obedient. I remember baptizing my next son, Angel, right here up in this tank. And I remember the joy that I felt as he went down into the water and he came back up and he was expressing his own faith in Jesus Christ. I remember baptizing my son, next son, Merrick, in that tank right there. And him, man, the joy that I had as a dad seeing my kid follow Jesus Christ. Today, we're going to see people be baptized in this tank and we are going to enter into the joy with God the Father as we're seeing people be obedient to Jesus Christ. And it just might be you're one of those people who's going to be obedient today, and we will receive joy because of your obedience. In John chapter 1, verse 32, the text goes on to say that John testifies, saying, I have seen the Spirit descending as a dove out of heaven, and he remained upon him. The Holy Spirit of God on the person of Jesus Christ is how John knew the Savior had been revealed to the world. And in verse 33, he says, I did not recognize him, but he who sent me to baptize in water said to me, He upon whom you see the Spirit descending and remaining on him, this is the one who baptizes in the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit of God is how John knew who the Savior was. In in fact, this is exactly the same way we recognize believers now who know who the Savior is. It's because of the Holy Spirit of God living in the believer. In 1 Corinthians 12, 12 and 13, it says this, For even as the body has yet many members, and all the members of the body, though they are many, they are one body, so also is Christ. For by one Spirit we were all baptized into one body, whether Jews or Greeks, whether slaves or free, and we were all made to drink of one Spirit. When a person places their faith in Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit of God immerses them saturates them, indwells them. And this is what water baptism represents in our own lives, that the Savior of the world has been revealed to us. Believer's baptism by water immersion represents that the Holy Spirit of God has filled us. And back in our passage of study, John comes to this moment and he says in verse 34, I myself have seen and have testified that this is the Son of God. And he knew this by the presence of the Holy Spirit. The wave number two is the revealing of the Son of God. We continue on. Wave number three is the command of the resurrected Messiah. And we see this in Matthew chapter 28, verses 16 through 20. Jesus had lived his life in ministry. He had gone to the cross to die for our sins. He was buried. Three days later, he rose again to new life. And now he's having a conversation with his disciples. It says, but the 11 disciples proceeded to Galilee 
to the mountain which Jesus had designated. And when they saw him, they worshiped him, but some were doubtful. And Jesus came up and spoke to them, saying, All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to observe all that I commanded you. And, lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Let's take a moment here to unpack the progression of this command. The first thing Jesus says is go and make disciples. Making disciples, that phrase, it means invite people to place their faith in Jesus Christ. Extend the invitation that people would place their faith in Jesus Christ. It's always the first step in our relationship with Jesus. Then he says baptize them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. It's why you're going to see as we baptize today, people are going to go down in the water three times. We're just honoring the three persons of God. Baptism in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. And then he says, teaching them to obey everything I've commanded. And here's the problem. Many people, they get this completely reversed because they take this backwards and they say, I have got to be perfect and obey all the commands so that I'm good enough to be baptized. And then once I'm baptized, then I will be able to earn my salvation. That is not what the scripture teaches. That is incorrect theology. It is the opposite. It is first, always, by faith. It's because by grace, through faith in Jesus Christ, that we come into salvation. And then the clear command of Jesus is, be baptized. And baptism, it is often one of the very first steps of obedience that a person takes to follow Christ because they don't know any other commands to obey. It's the first one they know. And so they come to faith in Christ and then they're baptized and they begin following Jesus. It's why we ask the two questions that we ask. The first one is this, are you trusting in Jesus Christ alone for your salvation? Because faith is the first step. And the second is from this moment on, are you wanting to trust in, in to obey Jesus Christ for the rest of your life to live in obedience? Because obedience follows faith. The third wave, wave number three, is the command of the resurrected Messiah to be baptized. And it might be today that you have the opportunity to obey that command, to come and to be baptized. And wave number four, as we look uh, in the scriptures, is the response of obedience in believers. And I'm going to read to you a number of passages very quickly to set this wave up. Romans 10, 9 says, if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Acts 4, 12 says, and there is salvation in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven that has been given among men by which we must be saved. Baptism does not save you. Salvation comes by grace alone, through faith alone, in Jesus Christ Alone, And when a person has faith in Jesus, they have salvation. And then the command of Jesus is be baptized. And we see this many examples in Acts. I cannot share them all. I will share three. Acts 8, 12. But when they believed Philip preaching the good news about the kingdom of God and the name of Jesus Christ, they were being baptized, men and women alike. Acts 18.8, Crispus, the leader of the synagogue, believed in the Lord with all his household. And many of the Corinthians, when they heard, were believing and being baptized. Acts 8, 35 through 38, then Philip opened his mouth and began from this scripture, he then preached Jesus to the eunuch he was speaking to. And as they went along the road, they came to some water and the eunuch said, look, water, what prevents me from being baptized? And Philip said, if you believe with all your heart, you may. And he answered and he said, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. And he ordered the chariot to stop. And they both went down into the water, Philip as well as the eunuch. And he baptized him. Amen. Wave number four in the baptism origin story is the response of obedience in believers. Now, the last wave that we're going to look at together, wave number five, is the presence of Jesus Christ. Christ, Because in Matthew 28, 19 through 20, he says, Go therefore and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. 
Believer's baptism by water immersion is a symbol that the Holy Spirit of God lives in the believer. The presence of Christ is inside the believer, which is why after Jesus commands for believers to be baptized, he says, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. The presence of Christ, it makes all the difference in the life of a believer. Condemned sinners like me, Condemned sinners like me, justified because of the work of Jesus Christ, that I might be able to come into a relationship with Jesus Christ, and that you might be able to come into a relationship with Jesus Christ, and that we might know our Creator God. He wants to provide a change in our life that's going to take place today and last through all eternity. The presence of Christ, it's represented in believers' baptism by water immersion. It's a beautiful symbol of the presence of Christ, that he has filled our lives, that he has transformed our lives from death to life. Going down into the water represents death to the old life, and coming up out of the water represents new life in Jesus Christ, filled with the presence of Christ. Paul writes to the believers in Corinth in 2 Corinthians Chapter 5, 14 through 17, and he says this, For the love of Christ controls us. Having concluded this, that one died, therefore all died. It's going down into the water. And he died for all so that they might live, no longer live for themselves, but for him who died and rose again on their behalf. And that's coming up out of the water. Therefore, from now on, we recognize no one according to the flesh, even though we have known Christ according to the flesh, yet now we know him in this way no longer. Therefore, check this out, therefore, if anyone, anyone includes you, therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creature, and the old things have passed away, and behold, the new things have passed. Come, baptism is a symbol of our new life in Jesus Christ. We are made new in Jesus Christ, and we have new life in Jesus Christ. Absolutely. Yes. And it may be, it may be today that you have been desperately searching for that life, and you need to stop searching because you can find it in Jesus Christ right now, today. Jesus Christ, he takes all the broken pieces of our old life and he makes us new with his presence in us. This, this is the Jesus that we worship. And isn't it wonderful and beautiful what he accomplishes with a big old mess of people like you guys? I mean, come on, this is saying, right? He does wonderful things in our life. You are meant to belong to Jesus and he has riches for you that far outweigh the riches or the glory that this world has to offer because you are meant to know your creator. You could never earn your salvation. You could never work your way to heaven. You and I need the free gift of Jesus Christ, the free gift of grace given to us. And here's the thing, he will keep his promise to us. He has promised to provide salvation as we place our faith in him and he will keep his promise and we will be with him for eternity. This, this is the Jesus that we worship and he will reign forever and ever in eternity. He wants to reign right now in your life. He wants to be king of you. Isn't he wonderful? Isn't he marvelous? Isn't he your savior also? Because he can be your savior right now. And I would encourage you right now to place your faith in Jesus Christ, in him alone for your salvation, that you would understand it's by his grace, his grace, his free gift given to you because of the costly, costly sacrifice of Jesus Christ on the cross, that you would come into a relationship with your creator, God, and that you would place your faith in Jesus Christ. And then, as you have placed your faith in Jesus Christ, either right now or who knows how long ago, take the step of obedience and be baptized because it is the next step of obedience to obey the command of Jesus Christ. And you today will add your own wave of faith to the countless waves of faith 
that have rippled throughout history in the generations of those who have followed Jesus Christ. We are going to celebrate today. We are going to celebrate big. And we want to celebrate with you. And wherever you are, if you're in the venue community, in the cafe, if you're watching online, get in your car and drive down here right now. If you're up in the balconies or in the mezzanine, you just find a hallway and you keep walking in a circle. We're going to make sure you get to where you need to go because today's going to be a wonderful day. We are going to celebrate with believers who are being baptized by water immersion because we want to obey the command of Jesus. Father God, Lord, we love you. And during this next song, God, I pray that the presence of Jesus Christ would do a great work in our church family. Father God, Lord, I pray that you would move in the lives of people right now. Lord, they're going to feel like they got Velcro on their butt, but would you rip them right out of their seats, God? And would you bring them down here, Lord, so that they might be able to take a step of faith and obedience in you? And God, would this be a great celebration? We do this because we want to be obedient. That's why we do this. We want to obey and we want to give you honor and glory. And we pray this in Jesus' name and all God's family said, amen.